Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in this video, we will explain the transconjunctival approach with lateral skin extension. Uh, a lateral canthotomy is frequently used with transconjunctival incisions for improved lateral exposure. So the lower pharynx transconjunctival incision can be extended with the uh, lateral skin incision, which is then enhanced by lateral canthotomy. The approach can be started with the lateral canthotomy and continued uh, medially into the transconjunctival uh, approach or reversely. The approach that will be demonstrated here is the retroceptal uh, transconjunctival approach uh, with the uh, canthotomy. The here you can see this is a, a clinical picture. Uh, um, that shows the uh, exposure after the transconjunctival approach with lateral extension. Uh, the conjunctiva in the area of the lower pharynx and the area of the lateral canthotomy may be infiltrated with small amount of local anesthetic containing a vasoconstrictive agent. The corneal protection is achieved with a specialized shields are at a later stage of the procedure with sutures connecting the cephalic edge of the conjunctiva with the upper lid. Canthotomy uh, means surgical exposure of uh, canthal uh, tendon. Uh, so after applying traction sutures in the lower eyelid, the procedure is initiated with lateral canthotomy. A pointed scissor is inserted horizontally into the outer lead angle laterally so that the instrument is in contact with the bone. Here you can see the instrument is in contact with the under, underlying bone of the lateral orbital rim approximately 7 to uh, 10 mm. The lateral palpebral fissure is cut horizontally, including the skin, orbicularis oculi muscle, and the conjunctiva. The superficial fanning fibers of the uh, lateral canthan tendon are also transected. The lower eyelid is now everted using traction suture. Uh, it is still fixed uh, to the lateral orbital rim by the inferior rim of the uh, lateral canthan uh, tendon. Here you can see this is a, uh, a dissected uh, picture showing that the inferior uh, limb uh, is still uh, is, is, is still attached. Uh, so note that the inferior limb of the lateral canthan tendon is still attached. So what will happen that uh, uh, since it is attached to the lower tarsus, Therefore, it will prevent the mobilization and uh, uh, this lower eyelid uh, is uh, not freely everted uh, due to the attachment of this inferior limb uh, of the lateral uh, canthal tendon. So we have to uh, cut it. So uh, cutting our transaction of the inferior limb of the lateral canthal uh, tendon is a uh, cantholysis. So we will proceed for the inferior cantholysis. This part of the lateral canthal uh, uh, apparatus, which is attached, uh, is transected. So this is known as inferior cantholysis. The scissors are introduced vertically, as you can see, vertically to cut the tendon. Subsequently, the lower lead is freed and can be retracted more effectively to start swinging the lower lid outwards. So when the cantholysis is complete, an immediate release of the lower lid from the lateral orbital rim is noted. The surgeon will be able to evert the lower lid more effectively. Here uh, in the previous picture, uh, uh, the lower limb Wa, uh, was seen, so the uh, eyelid was attached and now it has been transected, removed. Uh, this uh, picture is taken uh, from the 
cadaver and uh, showing the dissection of the uh, lateral canton uh, tendon. So when it is uh, transected, now you are easily evert this lower eyelid for the maximal exposure. The transconjunctival incision is performed in a lateromedial direction. It can be performed uh, preceptally or retroceptally. Uh, the lower eyelid is everted to identify the position of the lower tarsal plate through the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is now incised immediately along the inferior margin inferior margin of the tarsus to enter the preceptal uh, plane for the preceptal approach dotted line or at the base of the uh, fornix for retroceptal that is a solid line. Blunt tip uh, pointed scissors are used uh, to dissect through the small incision through the conjunctiva made during the made during the lateral canthotomy inferiorly towards the infraorbital rim. The traction sutures are uh, used to avoid the lower eyelid during the dissection. Spread the scissors uh, to clear a pocket just posterior to the orbital septum in case of retroceptal ending just posterior to the uh, orbital rim. The scissors are used to incise the conjunctiva and the lower lid retractors midway between the inferior margin of the tarsal plate and inferior uh, conjunctival fornix. Uh, the incisions are extended as far medially as necessary. In this picture, uh, this shows sagittal plane through the orbit and globe demonstrating level and plane of incision, the conjunctiva and uh, lower lid retractors are uh, incised with scissors. With dissection towards the infraorbital rim, uh, the lower lid is mobilized and can be retracted uh, anteromedially uh, in the uh, swinging eyelid fashion. Now to protect the cornea against abrasion, the corneal flap is pulled up and sutured to the upper lid margin now, as we explained in our previous video. Now, as soon as the bony surface is exposed to the desired uh, extent, the periosteum or periorbita is incised and the, di and the dissected over the anterior maxilla or into the orbital cavity in the usual fashion. Here you can see in this picture incision through the periosteum to facilitate this maneuver attraction, uh, attraction suture. And you can see here is placed through the cut end of the conjunctiva to retract the tissue and maintain the position of the uh, corneal shield. Small retractors uh, here you can see are placed so that the lower lid is retracted to the, to the level of the interior surface of the infraorbital rim. A broad retractor uh, is placed just posterior to the infraorbital rim confining the orbital, orbital fat. The intervening tissue, this one, uh, along the infraorbital rim is the periosteum. So uh, the incision through the periosteum is just uh, posterior to the orbital rim. This is the orbital rim and this is just posterior to the orbital rim area. So incision will be uh, through the periosteum is just posterior to the orbital rim when the retroceptal approach is used. So periosteal elevators are used to strip the periosteum over the orbital rim uh, and interior surface of the maxilla and zygoma and orbital floor. A broad malleable retractor should be placed as soon as feasible to protect the orbit and to confine the herniating uh, periorbital uh, fat. Uh, now note uh, the, here you can see, uh, note this uh, traction suture placed through the uh, cut end uh, of the conjunctiva, which assists in retracting the conjunctiva and maintains the corneal shield. This is a corneal shield over the cornea 
uh, in in its proper place. Here you can see uh, the clinical picture showing the dissection is completed, and you can uh, see the infraorbital margin, uh, sorry, infraorbital area, and a fracture is visible, and you can proceed uh, uh, for your treatment. Now, the conjunctival approach is uh, combined with the lateral canthotomy can be used to attain uh, physical exposure of the entire lateral orbital rim to the level 10 to 12 mm uh, above the zygometrical uh, frontal suture. This exposure in the cranial direction, in the cranial direction provides additional access to the lateral orbital wall. Uh, now, starting uh, from the lateral uh, canthotomy incision of supraperiosteal dissection along the lateral orbital rim is performed until a point above the uh, zygomatico frontal suture line is reached. The orbicularis oculi muscle and the superficial fan of the connective tissue fibers crossing the uh, crossing over the lateral canthan tendon are elevated and these are retracted uh, cranially during the uh, dissection. The periosteal incision, here you can see a periosteal incision from the infraorbital rim. This is extended vertically upward along the midline uh, of the lateral orbital rim just below the uh, retractor here, you can see inserted here. Uh, so the periorbita along the inferior lateral, periorbita along the inferior lateral wall of the orbit is stripped off uh, from the bone, including the insertion of the uh, wit nulls, uh, uh, including the insertion of the lateral canthal uh, ligament at wit nulls tubercle. Uh, finally, the inferior orbital rim, the orbital floor, the lateral orbital rim, and the lateral orbital wall are exposed and the sphenozygomatic suture line become visible. Here you can see a sphino, uh, uh, zygomat, sphino zygomatic suture line. Uh, this is this word, this is a frontozygomatic and this one is a uh, sphenozygomatic. You can see in another picture, this is a sphenoid bone and this is zygomatic bone. So this is a sphenozygomatic suture. So this is visible over here. When you will retract it in upward and posterior direction, so this frontozygomatic suture is also visible and you will extend um, uh, to the level 10 to uh, 12 mm above the zygomatic frontal suture and as well as you will extend posteriorly uh, to the sphenozygomatic uh, suture. So uh, um, canthopexy means repositioning of a canthal tendon or to place the canthal tendon to its original position. Uh, since we are dealing with the lateral canthal uh, uh, tendon, therefore here we will discuss the repositioning of the lateral canthal tendon. So closure of this approach requires refixation of the lateral canthal ligament inside the orbit and resuspension of the periorbita as well as the periosteum. The periosteum is sutured if applicable. Uh, Prior to closing the conjunctiva, a slow resorbing uh, suture loop uh, is applied exactly into the cut uh, edges of the inferior limb of the lateral canthus and through the corresponding superior limb of the lateral canthus. This loop is not yet tight. Uh, to provide open access to the uh, conjunctiva, the anchoring suture loop is tightened provisionally, however, to check for symmetry of the lateral canton area to the contralateral eye and to assure that the eyelid lies adjacent to the globe. So when the inferior limb of the canthal ligament cannot be identified, what you will do, then, uh, you, uh, then a lateral tarsal strip uh, uh, may be exposed by elevating the skin sharply. This will uh, uh, provide a readily identifiable uh, stump uh, that can be engaged to the lateral canthal uh, apparatus. Uh, the transconjunctival incision is closed from medial to lateral while loops of the inferior 
inferior canthopexy are still loose. The conjunctiva is usually closed with a running 6-0 fast resorbing suture with burying the burying knots. Uh, now, here you can see uh, closure of the transconjunctival incision and inferior canthopexy a running 6-0 fast resorbing suture uh, is placed through the conjunctiva and the lower lid retractors. Uh, after the closure of the conjunctiva is completed, the inferior canthopexy suture is tightened, bringing the lower eyelid into its original position. Subcutaneous sutures are placed along the horizontal skin line incision. Finally, the skin is sutured with 6-0 monofilament material. Thank you.